Good day, chemist in Japan de gozaimasu. Well, I, I brought my better camera home this evening, uh, but I can see from the picture that um, it looks like the picture quality is better, and hopefully the audio quality will be better as well. But um, unfortunately, with the lighting in my room, um, it looks like the camera's gain is turned all the way up, so it looks like there's a little noise if you look around in the picture. But either way, I think it's a, a better looking picture at the very least. Uh, I have it set on the, the highest video setting and maybe my computer is not going to be able to record at this setting very well. If not, I'll just change it for next time. But um, I wanted to respond to uh, Reynolds Air, uh, Jonathan's video on what is your calling. And at the same time, I guess I'll be answering a question that someone sent me by YouTube message and that was to talk about why I'm a chemist and why I like chemistry. Um, I can't remember who asked that question, but it's uh, it was asked of me. I went through my YouTube messages last night after not having gone through them for, I don't know, a year, <laughs> it seems like. Um, but it's very interesting. People ask me all the time, why chemistry and Japanese? And... When I was tutoring Japanese, I, I would hear people say, oh, well, I want to be a Japanese major. And I would always do my best to absolutely discourage anyone from becoming a Japanese major, or actually a language major in general, because I, from my point of view, I don't really understand what one can do with a language major other than teach the language. So, I mean, I guess if your goal is to teach the language that you're majoring in, then that works out well. But if your goal is not that, if your goal is to learn a language, then maybe majoring in that language is not the best thing to do. Um, for instance, I'm a chemist, but I just also happen to know Japanese to a certain extent. And learning Japanese was never, for me, in and of itself, the end. It was always a means to an end. So I got interested in chemistry in high school. That was my first real experience with it. And, you know, and when I was in high school, which was a long time ago, <laughs> I'm rather old. Uh, don't let, don't not let my, my appearance fool. You can see... Uh, you can see gray hair right there. I cover it up well. Um, but I'm old. Uh, but back when I was in high school, uh, the sequence of sciences was first biology, then chemistry, then physics, and then your fourth on the fourth year you took something else like a and anatomy and physiology or some up, you know something else. Some people didn't take anything. But when I took biology, I wasn't very interested in it. And I took chemistry. And for some reason, I don't know why, I just fell in love with it. And it was, it was so fun for me. I loved chemistry, and I couldn't, you know, every book I could find I would read, and I just loved it. And unfortunately, I got separated from chemistry um, after I graduated because I had to go to work. I had to work. And I ended up in, in engineering, uh, transmitter engineering. I maintained high power RF transmitters for radio and TV stations. And so that was my life for a good long while. Um, but all through it, I've still, I've always wanted to go back to chemistry. And I am, you know, eventually did go back to school full time for chemistry. And I've graduated now and I'm working my master's and everything. But, you know, I've asked people in the past, you know, do you love chemistry? You know, I've just randomly asked my fellow graduate students, I mean, do you really love this? Um, because oftentimes I get the vibe from people that they kind of are just doing it just because, like there's no real good reason. And it's rare that I find, you know, many people who just absolutely love it as much as I do. I mean, I get up in the morning and I'm thinking about chemistry, and I'm thinking about chemistry all day. I'm reading papers online all the time, you know, from scientific journals. Um, 
you should see my Google Google Reader. Uh, it's nothing but, you know, uh, the newest published papers from scientific journals, from the American Chemical Society and Angavanta Chemie and, you know, uh, you know, Tetrahedron and all you know all the big chemistry journals, and that's all I read all day. My my leisure reading is chem art chemistry papers. That's what I do. I sit and I read all the time and. And like I said in my last video, now I'm trying to write a, a paper, and you know it's difficult and it's hard. And I always wondered, you know, was I really going to be a chemist? You know, when I first started working at the TV stage, TV and radio stations, as an, as an engineer, there was so much to learn, and I really enjoyed that point in my career when every day was a new challenge, and every day was more stuff to learn. But after I did it for five years, you know, it suddenly became, uh, it started to get more and more routine. There was still stuff to learn, still new things to do and to learn, and it was still a challenge, but it was becoming more and more routine. And as time went on, the company started to take away parts of my job that I really liked. And, you know, one by one, they took away a piece of my job and a piece of my job and a piece of my job that I really liked until I was left with all the parts that they weren't horrible but it wasn't what I loved doing and and I realized that I wasn't being challenged every day and there wasn't something new every day to learn and I realized that I would kind of fallen into a rut and I really didn't love it anymore the way I did and all this time you know, working for the TV station, I was trying to go to school part-time, and I was still taking chemistry classes and still pursuing my degree, although, you know, it was like one class every semester or something like that. And there came a point where I decided that my job, even though it paid me well, was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. One, because I didn't enjoy it anymore. I didn't have a passion for it anymore. And two, I didn't think that my particular job was still going to be in existence for the rest of my life. You know, I feel truly that there's going to come a point at which their TV stations are no longer going to use high power transmitters to broadcast their signal, you know. So I jumped ship and went into chemistry and I became extremely, extremely poor, very, extremely poor and in debt very quickly. Um, you know, when I was working, when I was working, I made a good salary, but I didn't have a lot of bills. I didn't get myself into debt and everything like that. You know, I saved a whole bunch of money, and then I quit and I ran through my savings, and then <laughs> I was very, very poor. And then uh, now I have student loans, so now I'm in debt. But every day, I get up and I think about chemistry, and I think about it all day, and I don't get tired of it. There's always something to learn. There's always some new challenge every day. You know, I have to figure out why something failed or why something worked. Every day is a new challenge, and I absolutely love, love it, and I never get tired of learning. Now, there, of course, there are days when I just want to stay home because I'm, you know, tired from working and whatnot, but I still love it uh, every single day. I go in and I love it. And I work all day, and then I come home, and I think about chemistry at night. And I think about chemistry all the way up until I go to bed. And strangely enough, I do dream about chemistry as well. But, you know, J Japanese became a part of my life. And it then became something that I could do in addition to chemistry. And it became a tool. So learning, learning language became a tool because then I discovered that I really liked being in Japan. When I thought, well, if I could combine chemistry and living in Japan, that would be awesome. And so now I'm attempting to make that happen. And so that's even a bigger challenge and a whole lot more fun. But, you know, I don't see myself as being a professor because they have to beg for money and write for grants and they don't get to work in the lab. So I guess my ideal job would be a research scientist where I can have my PhD and work in a lab at the same time. That would be my ideal job. And so hopefully someday I will get to do that. But chemistry is my life. And 
you know, as embarrassing as something like this is to say, I, you know, I really want what I do to somehow contribute to making the world better. And who knows, maybe one day, you know, something that I get to be a part of, some project that I get to be a part of will help make the world a better place. I mean, that's why I'm a chemist. You know, one of the big things I think about, you know, are the, the big problems. You know, of course, I can't solve them myself. But, you know, one of my coworkers, he and I like to just sit around and theorize about stuff, you know, things that we could do. You know, how can the projects that we're working on benefit a real world problem? So I, I have hope that somehow I can contribute to, to making the world a better place. And chemistry seems to be something that I'm halfway decent at. Much, much, uh, much to my sadness, I am not a musician. Kind of wish I was, um, because I know how how much that how much fulfillment that can bring to a person's life. So, Jonathan, uh, on that side, you've got me beat. Um, you have the joy of music by playing the music. I enjoy music just by listening to it. So hopefully, if everything goes well, you will be a musician, I will be a chemist, and I'll come and watch you play. How about that? So, there you are. Uh, ikigai. Um, ikigai. Uh, Jonathan's word. Ikigai. So, hopefully, this is a good response. In any case, thanks for watching.